Good day. We are going to discuss Horner syndrome in a very brief and faster way. Horner syndrome is basically a oculosympathetic paresis. So what does it mean? It means that it is a combination of symptoms that occur in eye due to lesion of the sympathetic trunk of same side. So what all feature we will be getting? We will be getting three characteristic feature of meiosis, partial ptosis and apparent anhydro anhydrosis. That means a constricted pupil, partial ptosis and apparent anhydrosis. In some case, we also get apparent inaphthalmos which is in drawing of the eyeball which is just apparent but not in real. If we go into its history, it was defined or named after Johann Friedrich Horner, a Swiss ophthalmologist who defined it in 1869. In some parts of France, it is also called Bernard Horner syndrome due to Claude Bernard. Now moving into its sign and symptoms, we already know three main characteristic symptoms of partial ptosis, meiosis and anhydrosis. We should also know that loss of ciliospinal reflux or heterochromia iridis can also occur in case of congenital Horner syndrome. So all of these are occurring due to interruption of the sympathetic pathway to the eye. Now meiosis is occurring because the sympathetic supply of the dilator pupillary muscle which is a radial muscle of the iris. So the radial muscle of the iris, the dilator pupillae is responsible for the dilatation of the pupil. What happens is this radial muscle contract on activation by the sympathetic pathway and in absence of this sympathetic pathway, the dilatation of this pupil cannot occur resulting in the meiosis. So due to inactivation of the dilator muscle, we see meiosis. We see the partial ptosis due to inactivation of the superior tarsal muscle and we see anhydrosis due to reduced sweat secretion on that side of the face of which the sympathetic trunk is affected. So all the three features, characteristic features has be, have been defined. Now why we see heterochromia iridis in case of congenital Horner syndrome? Because they, because of this lack of sympathetic stimulation in childhood which has interfered with the melanin pigment formation of the melanocytes in the superficial stroma of the iris and thus we see lack of pigmentation of the heterochromia iridis means two different iris of different colors. Now moving to the causes it can be congenital huh? because of inborn heterochromia iridis or iatrogenic due to medical trauma or in rare cases due to repeated or minor head trauma such as hit by volleyball or saucer ball. Now it can also be due to some tumor compressing the sympathetic ganglion that is the pancos tumor. The tumor in the apex of the lung which suppress or compress the stellate ganglion, the sympathetic ganglion located over there and thus producing the symptoms of Horner syndrome. Now to simplify it, we can divide the causes into central or the central preganglionic and the postganglionic. So in among among preganglionic or the central we can see syringomelia, multiple sclerosis, encephalitis, brain tumor and lateral medullary syndrome. In preganglionic it can be due to cervical rib traction on the stellate ganglion thyroid carcinoma, thyroidectomy, goiter, bronchogenic carcinoma, the pancost one, clump, clump case paralysis, trauma and as a result of thoracic aortic aneurysm. Among postganglionic it can be due to cluster headache, <coughs> carotid artery detection or carotid artery aneurysm. What happens is during carotid artery detection some of the uh, blood clot may enter into the intimal layers of the carotid artery and causing the dilatation of the irregular dilatation of the artery or the carotid artery aneurysm which later may form the emboli or means may cause complication. Now Kevin's sign is thrombosis, sympathetectomy and the nerve blocks. So basically what is occurring is lack of or the uh, deficiency of the sympathetic activity in the eye on the ipsilateral side. So as already defined the central preganglionic 
and the postganglionic. So why this categorization? Because the sympathetic supply to the eye comes from three neurons. The first order neurons or the central neurons, the second order neurons or the preganglionic neurons and the third order neurons or the postganglionic neurons. So based upon the lesion of the first, second and third neuron, we can divide the lesion or the level of the lesion. So central lesion will involve the hypothalamic tract. The preganglionic will be compressing the sympathetic chain by a lung tumor like Pankow's tumor in the chest and the third order neuron or the postganglionic neuron occur at the level of internal carotid artery or example a tumor of cavernous sinus or carotid artery dissection so that release the norepinephrine so uh, moving to the other part that is the diagnosis it can be done by cocaine drop test paradine test dilatation dilation lag test now something which is important is we should be able to differentiate the ptosis of horner syndrome with the ptosis of oculomotor nerve so it is very easy if we see the ptosis of horner syndrome is occurring with meiosis that is constricted pupil while the ptosis of the oculomotor will occur with the dilated pupil so both are very contrast we will be as easily able to differentiate oculomotor will be with dilated pupil due to loss of innervation to the sympathetic pupil <coughs> Another point which we can see is that in oculomotor nerve palsy, the ptosis is of much more severe grade than in case of Horner syndrome where we see only partial ptosis. So this was all something basic about Horner syndrome. This is Dr. Shivam signing off. Thank you all.